if you're not doing some kind of resistance training. And as you lose muscle mass, you become insulin insensitive. So what happens is the insulin isn't working. So it starts accumulating in your blood. What a lot of people don't know is that insulin is a promoter of cancer. It's a growth promoter. So, you know, everybody thinks it's just the sugar, you know, don't eat sugar, you know, cancer loves sugar, but a lot of it has to do with the fact that it jacks up your insulin and insulin is a growth factor for cancer. So, you know, exercise is just incredibly amazing. In fact, I always say in my book, if it was a pill, everybody in the world would be taking it. everyone. If you're looking to be inspired, motivated, educated, and entertained, you have come to the right place. Welcome to the Bob Mom Podcast, the podcast where we explore your fitness, life mindsets, and actions that help you become unstoppable. You're worth it, and it's time to finally make changes in your life that will last you the rest of your life. Welcome to the Bomb Mom Podcast, everyone. I am Melissa Vogel, your host. Welcome to the show. I am so happy that it is a fresh month. We're starting off the month right, talking more about the insides and health and fitness and how your diet, what you eat, what you don't eat, dramatically affects your life and helps prevent cancer. (gasps) Our guest today is just out of this world. He is incredible. But first, welcome to the show. If you are brand new, thanks for joining us. If you're returning, welcome back. As always, you guys are not going to be disappointed. A couple housekeeping rules. You guys, rate this podcast. It's huge. It's going good. And we want more. So five stars, of course, and then make sure you write a comment or review. I should call it. It's like leaving me a huge tip in my tip jar. So make sure you rate it, write a review. It's greatly appreciated. And it does amazing things for the show. And go back and listen to all of them, all of the episodes. Like you can't listen to them enough. I just had someone send me an email and she's like, I'm on episode five and I love it. And I'm like, oh my God, episode five seems so long ago and dive in. Go back to episode number one. I want you guys to go back. One, there's just so much knowledge in this podcast. We have had just the most amazing guests ever in, you know, the experts of their field and sharing knowledge of just every single topic. Then you get me solo as well and my coaches and clients and just everything. This podcast just engulfs everything that is important in life. And I don't want you to miss a thing. We have a lot of cool discount codes too. Our sponsors are always awesome. So don't miss anything. Now, as we are moving forward with a fresh month and it's February for us now, but you guys can listen to these episodes any time of the year and it doesn't matter. And you can wake up every single morning and it's a fresh start. I want everyone to really start paying attention to what goes into your body this year. Make 2023 be the year of change. I've said that in earlier podcast episodes, and I'm going to keep hammering it in because what you eat definitely has an effect on your overall health. And now we're learning more and more about how you can prevent cancer. On that same note, what you go on the inside goes in the inside is super important, but also on the outside. I want you guys to pay attention to your environment, who you surround yourself with, who is in your corner, who is helping you move forward to hit your goals, and who isn't. Who is being a bad influence? Who is that naughty influence in your life? And sometimes that might be our significant other. Sometimes that's our partner. Does that mean we get rid of them? No, but we can have crucial conversations with them and let them know like, hey, I'm really trying to A, B, and C. You know, I'm really trying to lose weight. I'm really trying to focus on this, whatever. Communicate with them because your environment is really, really important. We have new people starting with Busy to Bomb Fit Mom this month. Always check the show notes, you guys, and find out if we are taking calls because I want to change everyone's life from the inside and out. And this episode is going to help you change what's going on the inside. I help a lot with on the outside and the inside, but always check the show notes because we want you to be able to join if the doors are open. And February, we are opening our doors. Get in because this is going to help you with accountability, staying on track with the foods that you're going to eat. This is going to help with your environment and surrounding yourself with people that are going to help you move forward. And you know what? Maybe you just need that kick in the butt. Maybe you just need that big swift kick in the butt of like, I need someone to tell me that I'm important. I need someone to tell me that I need to start showing up for me again. Please help me. We're there. We will 100% help you. So 
maybe bomb life is for you. You guys have heard me talk about it in previous episodes. And I just wanted to make sure I made a note of that, said it out loud because the door is open in February. So it just depends on when you listen to this. And even if the door's closed, still book a call, still talk with me because we'll come up with a plan B. We'll find some other way for you to move forward, okay? Today's guest is Dr. Brandy, and he is an MD. He's been practicing medicine for over 40 years, and he is the founder of Natural Insights into Cancer, which is a passion project for Dr. Brandy. Natural Insights into Cancer uses diet, exercise, targeted supplements, and other lifestyle changes to help you fight cancer. Health and nutrition has been a passion of Dr. Brandy since the age of 10. And Dr. Brandy is also the author of Beat Back Cancer Naturally. This book includes five scientifically proven natural and plant-based ways to prevent, survive, and thrive with cancer. And on today's episode, Dr. Brandy shares with us today that over five years ago, he was diagnosed with a blood cancer. And like all cancer patients, you know, after the shock, he started to get his life and spiritual priorities in order. He talks about how he went on a cruise and this, I believe this was two months before he got his diagnosis and he started reading into more about plant-based diets, how it can really affect and beat cancer. And this podcast episode is just full of all the different studies and his proof and what he's learned and and how he's just jam-packed it into his book, Beat Back Cancer Naturally. I was blown away. Every study that he is sharing is just mind-blowing and how you can not only beat cancer, but he talks about specific cancers and just like how exercise can help beat cancer. And he dives into cancer and how much it can help you beat it and prevent it from coming back. It's just incredible. This episode is one of the ones that you listen to a couple times. I was taking notes while I'm interviewing him because it was just so amazing. And I'm going to re-listen to it several times and take even more notes. I'm going to post to my social media right now. Make sure you guys follow me Instagram. It's Melissa Vogel, ITS Melissa Vogel. And I'm going to post some of his things. But when this airs, we'll post more and everything too. But he shares his whole coffee mixture. And he talked about that in the episode. So I'm like, I'm going to go share that right now. So I I don't miss it, but just so many incredible studies, ways that you guys can change your life forever, prevent cancer, beat cancer. And we're just so blessed to have Dr. Brandy on the show with us today. So check out the show notes, go to his website, naturalinsightsintocancer.com. He's actually talks about at the end of the show, how he is doing blood testing and everything he's doing with that. And then you guys get the results and you can set up a consultation with him and he can give you recommendations and everything, what to look for. So, so much in this podcast. I wish we could have talked for another two hours, but we do have lives. So everyone go on, enjoy the show, check the show notes, and I will see you all later. Welcome to the show, Dr. Brandy. How are you today? Hey, I'm doing great. I can't wait to dive into your story and your book and this incredible journey of life that you have been on. We're really lucky to have you here. Oh, hey, I'm, it's a great pleasure to be here. I love your podcast. It's awesome. Oh, well, thank you. We keep it real here. We definitely keep oh, yeah, it real. You do. Yeah, you do. A lot of energy. So you've been practicing medicine as a medical doctor for 42 years, and you were into plastic surgery, med spa, anti-aging, one of my favorite topics during that <laughs> time. <women. laughs> yeah, right? Oh, I'll take any anti-cancerous, anti-aging hack you can give me. So I (laughs) throw them all to us today. But I mean, not only that, you've done like 76 scientific articles and nine textbook chapters in the medical journal, like over 200 lectures. You've done a lot in your lifetime. Bravo, sir. (laughs) Oh yeah. Well, I'm an old man. That's, you know, when you're old, (laughs) you get to do all those things. Well, you don't look it at all. I know our podcasters can't see you, but I can. And I was, we were talking. Appreciate that. Before we hit record, he was like, I just got done do- recording a three minute video for my clients. I'm like, that's awesome. An exercise video, I should say. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. So tell me a little bit about, because you're also the founder of Natural Insights into Cancer. Tell me a little bit about this. Well, I had, as you said, I had a plastic surgery, med spa, anti-aging center for 40 plus years. Wow. And three years ago, I sold it to some venture capital a venture capital group. So at that point, I really dedicated all my life to doing cancer coaching. 
And the way I got into that is I got diagnosed with multiple myeloma, which is an incurable blood cancer five years ago. And my journey really started two months before the diagnosis. I was on a cruise with my wife, two week cruise, and I've read well over 300 books on health and nutrition in my career because I've had this anti-aging center. And I came across a book called How Not to Die by Dr. Michael Greger. I don't know if you ever read it before. I have. I've actually, I think it's on my shelf right now. I think my mom gave it to me. Yeah. What's amazing, if you get the hardback, it's about two inches thick Uh and about an inch of it are scientific references. And that's what I really liked about this book. As I was reading it, it was just demonstrating with these various studies that cohorts, research cohorts and cultures that ate more plant-based had a much lower incidence of cancer, cardiovascular disease, all-cause mortality. And two days into reading this book, we're on this two-week cruise, and I tell my wife, Trina, I'm going to start eating whole food plant-based. And she thought I was out of my mind. Here we are with all this meat and dairy and desserts. Yeah, especially on a cruise. You have like everything. Oh, it's it's crazy. So I decided to go whole food plant-based at that point. When I came home, That week, I was actually doing surgery and I felt a little pop in my right shoulder and I didn't know what the heck was going on. I didn't think a whole lot of it, but it just kept getting worse and worse. And then this is like the last week of October. It's starting to keep me up at night. And I remember telling my wife, Trina, you know what? I think I have bone cancer. And she said, oh, you're you're the healthiest guy. No, there's no way you have bone cancer. But it just kept getting worse. And then two weeks later, we were watching television and I accidentally knocked over a container of water, I lunged for it, my bone just cracked right in half. <gasps> you know, I went to the urgent care center, you know, it was completely displaced. I got an MRI and they found what's called a plasma cytoma. It's kind of multiple myeloma tumor. It was about three centimeters in diameter. So then they did a bunch of blood studies, a biopsy, and they found that I had this IgA kappa multiple myeloma. So that's when my, my journey really started. But what's really interesting is that I have an IgA myeloma. So there's IgA, IgG, IgM. IgA is the most aggressive. That's the type that I have. And my doctor wanted to put me on a triple uh, regimen, two oral medications, and then another medication that have to go in for shots in my abdomen. And the thing about the Valcade, which was the shot, uh-huh. is that a good 90% of people get a really severe peripheral neuropathy. So I rejected it. In fact, he pulled me into a side room and there was another patient that had Valcade. He tried to talk him into having me do the Valcade. And that guy's actually a really good friend of mine. We go out to lunch all the time, <laughs> but I came back and I told him, doc, I'm not doing the Valcade. And he was super upset. He didn't think I was going to get into remission, but six months later, Just with oral medication, I got into a complete remission and I've stayed there and the medications have come down to really super low levels, but I still am required to take medication because it is an incurable disease. So Mm -hmm. what I do is I pretty much keep it managed and I live a very, you know, with the lifestyle decisions I've made and I write about in my book, I live a very energetic full life. What would you be like right now? Like what would your situation be had you not... I would have been dead if I didn't do any medication. Yeah, in fact, in fact, 20 years ago, I actually had a nurse uh, that was a nurse injector, a Botox injector. She was about 62, looked like she was 42, very fit, dressed to kill. And I remember she had multiple myeloma. And I remember her asking me questions about it. And a year and a half, she was dead. I mean, it was, you know, it was a death sentence really 20 years ago. But nowadays they have better treatments, you know, immunomodulatory drugs, mm-hmm. they call them, that work like pretty well. And, you know, the average person, there was a a journal article in the the journal leukemia, the average person with myeloma relapses at about 26 months. I'm way double past that. I'm still doing great. No relapse for me. I'm going to make it to 90. So that's amazing. And that this is what all inspired you to write the book, beat back cancer naturally five scientifically proven result, natural and plant-based ways to prevent, survive and thrive with cancer. Right. Well, what happened was when I got diagnosed, I did a deep dive into the scientific literature. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I read every article on any, every herb, you know, exercise, anything that could help me in this battle. And as I was, you know, developing all this information, this was about a year later, I'm very well known in Pittsburgh. And I decided I was going to have a meeting where I was going to kind of dispense all this information. And there was a local broadcaster on one of the news stations. She used to do some interviews with me about different plastic surgery procedures. Mm-hmm. And I asked her, hey, said, could you do a little interview for this 
you know, meeting I'm going to put together. So she came in, she did this interview and I had like 125 people show up for this thing. And I don't know how I stretched this lecture out to two hours, but I did. <laughs> and I had a standing ovation. It was the first time I've ever had a standing ovation in my life. But I think these people that were there, a lot of them were cancer patients. I just think they felt that they were totally at the mercy of the chemo drugs and the radiation. And there wasn't anything that they could do themselves to help their prognosis. In fact, this one lady came up to me at the end. I mean, she was overtly obese and she had asked her doctor, hey, should I change my diet or anything? Goes, oh no, just keep doing what you're doing. And you know, that just didn't sound right to her. So I think that's why I got that standing ovation. And then after that, you know, I started a website, Natural Insights into Cancer. I used to have monthly meetings at one of my men's spas. We used to get a hundred people there. I don't even know how we stuffed them wow. in there. But I would get guest speakers coming in and then COVID hit and then all that, you know, basically ended. But I started my Instagram site, uh, Cancer Veggie Doc. I do one or two posts every day on various, you know, aspects of what I do, you know. So it's become really a passion project of mine. My goal in life right now is just to help cancer patients, you know, live longer, but have a very high quality of life by just making some lifestyle decisions. I love that. And there's not many people out there like you doing that. People get diagnosed with cancer or even other crazy, uncurable diseases. And they're like, it's a death sentence. This is the way I have to live. Or they're like at the mercy of, you know, pharma, you know. Oh, yeah. Right. Like all of it. And they're like, this is just the way it is. And there's not many people like you saying, no, hold on. You can actually reverse this, cure it, live a wonderful long life. And we just don't have it. Oh, oh yeah. And one of the things you would be interested in, since you're a fitness coach is, you know, exercise has an amazing effect on cancer in a positive way. Oh, give it to me. Yes. For instance, you know, if you look at various cancers, you know, people that exercise regularly have a decreased cancer risk of just about every cancer. Mm-hmm. It's anywhere from 10 to 35% less risk, but breast cancer, especially if you have breast cancer and you just briskly walk, for about a half an hour, five days a week, uh, you decrease your chance of a relapse by about 24%. And then if you jog, you know, kind of run and get short of breath for two thirds of a mile every day, you lower your chance of relapse by 40%. And the people that are type A that run 2.3 miles a day, they actually have a 95% reduction in relapse rates. What? So exercise is amazing. It does so many positive things. It boosts your immune system. It kind of jacks up your uh, tumor suppressor genes. It has like this epigenetic effect. It's anti-inflammatory. It helps your innate antioxidant systems to work more efficiently. And you probably have talked about this on some of your shows, but it, it increases your insulin sensitivity. You know, you well know, I'm sure that as you get older, you lose quite a bit of muscle. In fact, when you get over 50, you lose about 1% of your muscle mass if you're not doing some kind of resistance training. And as you lose muscle mass, you become insulin insensitive. So what happens is the insulin isn't working. So it starts accumulating in your blood. What a lot of people don't know is that insulin is a promoter of cancer. It's a growth promote. So, you know, everybody thinks it's just the sugar, you know, don't eat sugar, you know, cancer loves sugar, but a lot of it has to do with the fact that it jacks up your insulin and insulin is a growth factor for cancer. So, you know, exercise is just incredibly amazing. In fact, I always say in my book, if it was a pill, everybody in the world would be taking it, you know, and it, it's not only that, but you probably well know, and your uh, clients probably notice it. They sleep better and sleep is one of the five ways that I discuss in my book, you really need about seven to eight hours of sleep every night. But that's when a lot of your immune activity is going on. That's when your body's fighting a lot of these cancer cells. There's a lot of DNA repair going on, autophagy, where there's misfolded proteins and your body's kind of getting rid of those, mm-hmm. cleaning up all the, you know, the cellular debris. So when you exercise, you're sleeping better. And also you feel less stressed. You know, how many times do people, you know, they're stressed out. I know myself, I feel like the world's going to cave in and then I do half an hour of exercise and all of a sudden everything seems like it's okay. And they've actually shown that exercise works uh, as well as antidepressants. And a lot of, a lot of studies show that, uh, you know, instead of popping a pill, you know, if you can get into a habit of exercising on a daily basis, that can really 
fix a lot of these mental problems that yeah. uh, people are having. My ex-husband works for a company and way back in the day, back when pharmaceutical reps would go in and put on a lunch, you know, and, or a presentation and they'd pay for the dinner and all that right, stuff. Right, right. I would get tagged along. I, I could tag along. And right. if any of the talks, you know, interest me, I'd sit there and get in a suit and just act like I was supposed to be there. And one of them was on an antidepressant and this doctor and I really hit it off. And he was like, it's my drug, you know, it's what I recommend to my patients, whatever. But he was doing research and had all these studies about how much more effective that antidepressant was when his patients exercised. And his right, whole right. talk was about how if you do have to be on them, start exercising because it's actually going to make it work even better. Now, never and the other that. thing, a lot of these antidepressants uh, make patients gain weight. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that can make them more depressed. They look in the mirror and, you know, they're gaining weight and then they feel more down in the, in the dumps. So I, I do agree, you know, if you need an antidepressant, take it, but I think exercising with it, and then eventually, hopefully you can wean yourself off of the antidepressant. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and like sex drive and libido for women. Oh, everything. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, it's like women are already struggling with our self-esteem and confidence, you know, and to t have that taken away too. It's like, oh, you're killing me world. <laughs> you're hey, killing one of the me. things I, one of the things I wanted to mention too, that your listeners might appreciate is that studies show that you only need six minutes of exercise to jack up your natural killer activity by 50%. That's crazy. So natural, so natural killer cells are the cells that kill cancer cells. So, you know, I do a, every morning I do a 15 minute resistance band exercise. I hit all my muscle groups. It takes me about 15 minutes. I go through it very quickly. I get real short of breath. It's kind of like an anaerobic and aerobic workout mm -hmm. that I do. But, you know, sometimes I don't feel like doing it. So I'll just cut it in half. Instead of 15 minutes, I'll do seven and a half minutes. And I know that I'm getting benefit from that. And I listened to one of your podcasts. You were talking about mom guilt. How like, you know, so real. <laughs> sometimes women, you know, if they have to go an hour to the gym, you know, it's like, oh, geez, I should be doing this with my kids and so forth. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, you know, if you just can do a little quick thing at home, even that's 10 or 15 minutes, you can get your exercise and not have that, you know, mom guilt thing, you know, so oh, absolutely. Sometimes we have to like take it off the plate of like, let's take going to the gym off and weight training and everything. Let's just start with a walk. Let's yeah, go all the way back and just yeah. start with a walk. And that's okay. Right, right. And I showed you how brisk walking with breast cancer patients had an amazing effect on relapse yeah. rates. It's actually mind blowing. Right. I mean, that, it doesn't run in my family. Everything's ever always come back for me, but just hearing that alone, like from a preventative standpoint, we all need to be walking just two miles a day, just plain and simple. Get yeah, it in. <laughs> absolutely. 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 And you're going to feel so much better and you're going to look better. And when you look in the mirror, it's going to put you in a good mood. So mm -hmm. a lot of benefits. So your main diet, I'm curious, like, what did you have for breakfast today and lunch? I had a chia pudding with raspberries, uh, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries. And I actually start my morning off with, it's an organic light roast coffee. I put, in fact, I just did a post on it yesterday on Instagram, if anybody's interested. Oh. I put 12 different freeze-dried powders in the coffee. Cacao powder is the main one. I do about a tablespoon of that. And then there's a, a protein powder that has a cacao chocolate kind of flavor. And then I do, you know, it's strawberry, raspberry, blackberry, blueberry, grape, mangosteen, mushroom, cy berry. And the reason I do those, I don't, you know, your listeners might not be aware of this, but when you ingest one gram of blueberry powder, for example, that's like eating 50 grams of blueberry because fruit and vegetables are about 90 to 95% water. And these plant foods have unbelievable anti-cancer activity. I don't know if you know this, but there's over 25,000 phytonutrients in fruits and vegetables, and they do incredible things. And when you synergize them, and the reason I always do things together is I want to get a synergistic effect of all the phytonutrients. Like they've shown, for example, there was one study where they applied an onion extract to breast cancer cells that were growing in a Petri dish, and they killed about you know, 25% of the cancer cells. Oh my gosh. And then they added grape and that killed about 50%. But then they did a half and half 
mixture. And you would think it would be in between. It would you mm -hmm. know, be somewhere like 35%. No, it was 75%. Killed 75% of the breast cancer cells. So when you combine different foods, and that's why eating a variety of different plant foods is so incredibly powerful for your health. So when I do these fruit powders, in fact, I'll just kind of give you an example of strawberry powder. There was a study uh, in one of the Asian journals and they took people with early esophageal cancer. And for those that aren't aware, esophageal cancer is the most deadly cancer next to pancreatic. Yeah. So they took these individuals and they put them on a quarter cup of freeze-dried strawberry powder for six months. 80.6% had reversal of the cancer and they showed it by endoscopy. Like they actually went in there with a scope and took photographs and 50% had complete elimination of the early esophageal cancer. I mean, it's actually mind blowing. So I try to get all of my cancer patients that I coach to do some kind of freeze dried powder. You know, they can put it in their smoothie. I like to do it in my morning coffee. Where do you get these from? Where do you get where do, you can do you have a on Amazon? One thing I don't do, I don't talk any supplements, you know, everything that I recommend, I personally take over 30 supplements. They're mainly herbal supplements. And I get them all on Amazon. Everything that I do, I highly research. I go on consumerlab.com, make sure they're you know high quality. Mm -hmm. But I just, and I try to find ones that are reasonably priced. So mm -hmm. the recommendations that I make, I mean, they, they can get them all on Amazon. In fact, if they go to my Instagram site, Cancer Veggie Doc, yesterday, I did a post on all the freeze-dried powders I put into my coffee. And oh, you're probably cool. wondering, how in the hell does he get all those in there? Okay. But I use a large cup. I add soy milk. So the coffee goes about halfway up and the other half soy milk. Then I put it in the microwave for about a minute. And then I just sip it. I do my computer work first thing in the morning and I just sip it as I'm, and I honestly, I look forward to that every morning because it tastes so good. And to me, it's almost like an IV chemo infusion because I do intermittent fasting. I don't know if you do uh, that. I do too. I just broke my fast. <laughs> yeah. I do mine a little differently than most because I really like to eat something later. You know, my last thing that I eat is eight o'clock and then I don't eat until 12 noon the mm -hmm. next day. So when I do my drink, it's usually about six in the morning. So it's still, I consider that still part of my fast, but to me, it's almost like I, you know, I'm getting an IV chemo infusion, you know, while I'm fasting. And one other thing that they're finding is that if you fast, I don't know if you've ever read any of the work of Walter Longo. He's a famous medical doctor. He's kind of one of the world's experts on fasting, but they're finding when individuals fast 24 hours before their chemo treatment and 24 hours after the chemo works much, much better with a lot less side effects. They don't get a lot of the nausea and vomiting and so forth from the chemo. So it's almost like I'm doing the fasting, you know, getting my, uh, you know, chemotherapy at the same time. And these phytochemicals, just so you know, some of the things that they do, because I, I research this stuff every single day, but they affect cell signaling between the cancer cells. Uh, they cause DNA fragmentation of the cancer cells. They disrupt angiogenesis, which is a uh, blood vessel growth so that the cancer, it can't grow as well. Uh, almost mm -hmm. all of them do that. You know, they disrupt the cell cycle of the cancer cell at various aspects of the uh, DNA synthesis and replication. They're proteasome inhibitors. So they kind of disrupt the cancer's ability to get rid of uh, proteins that are misfolded and you know, basically cause death to the cancer cells and they cause what's called apoptosis, which is cancer cell suicide. But it's amazing what these phytochemicals do. And that's why when the National Cancer Institute recommends nine servings of fruits and vegetables for the prevention of cancer, that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically killing cancer cells and preventing them from getting started in the first place. And then if you get them, you know, spreading uh, right. into your body. Yeah. And if you're taking and consuming this and it's so powerful. It's killing cancer cells. My God, I got to imagine that you have the most amazing immune system too. Like if your body is that boosted. Well, you know, it's weird since I've been diagnosed, I haven't even had a cold. My wife had COVID. My three kids had COVID. I was around them. I was kissing them. And you know, I've been around other people who have COVID. I've never even got a cold, so, let alone COVID. So my, my immune system, and I have an immune cancer on top of that. Yeah. So I really have my immune system pretty boosted. And I also 
you know, do vitamin D, which I think is really critical for the immune system. I try to keep my levels about 80 to 100. You know, we found through the COVID crisis that people that had higher vitamin D levels actually had much lower incidence of getting COVID and then being admitted in the hospital for COVID. So that's something I will tell you, I don't know if it's like in California, but in Pittsburgh, I would say probably 90% of people are vitamin D deficient because we just don't get a lot of sun. In fact, there was one study uh, where they measured vitamin D levels on every patient in that practice. It was in a Northern climate practice and 90% did have low vitamin D levels. So wow. yeah, and it's easy to get the vitamin D up. I mean, there's a supplement that I recommend to my patients. It's a liquid supplement. It has vitamin D3, K2, MCT, and some omega-3 in there. So it's like I add a couple you know, CCs of that every morning in mm-hmm. my, the drink that I make every day. So Today's episode is brought to you by Athletic Greens. And I love being able to talk about this product on my podcast because it has literally changed my life. I haven't missed a single dose in probably eight months or so. And everyone's asking, okay, what is this stuff? With one One scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. You really are starting your day out right. You wanna drink it first thing in the morning if you can on an empty stomach because it sets your gut up for optimal absorption. So when you are eating healthy and you are eating the right things, your body can actually absorb it. This blend of ingredients, it supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging all of the things and it's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself and it still tastes great it's got less than one gram of sugar no gmos and no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting amazing and right now it's the time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition especially with it being flu and cold season. It's just one scoop in water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packets with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash bomb mom. Again, it's athleticgreens.com forward slash bomb mom to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance back to the show. It's so easy to do. And during COVID and all that too, like being in California, I made the kids go out every single day. I'm like, I don't even care if it's cloudy. You're still going to get it. (laughs) Like it's still, Oh no, you get when it's cloudy, you definitely get a sun exposure. Like people think when it's cloudy, they're not getting sun exposure. I mean, you're definitely getting it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, get out there. And they're like, why? Like you need the sun. We went out yesterday. I don't care. Go. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Too many kids just sit in the house nowadays and, you know, look at their phones. So I know, I know. And all these things that you're mentioning, like everyone can put a scoop of a powder into their coffee or take a drop on their tongue of vitamin D. Like, Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They're simple to do, you know, so simple. And that's what the coaching's about. You know, you're a coach. It's really coaching them along, you know, make sure, you know, when it comes from me, I'm a medical doctor. It does carry some weight. I go through the studies. I show them how these, you know, phytonutrients work. I have a couple lectures on my website about the synergy of phytochemicals. I have a couple 20 minute lectures on there. Tell them to take a look at those. But, you know, people just need to understand that plant foods have a lot of power. And a lot of it is actually in the fiber. I know you've had some podcasts on the microbiome. Oh, yeah. But there there was a large, this was the largest study I've ever seen. It was in Lancet. And they looked at 185 prospective studies and they looked at 58 uh, clinical trials. And they looked at the highest fiber consumers compared to the lowest fiber consumers. And the lowest had a 30% higher incidence of premature death. I mean, that's, that's dramatic. Wow. And it was, and it was 135 million person year. Like in yeah. study. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. And then there was another one actually that kind of, you know, gave people kind of an idea of incremental increases in fiber. It was like a 2014 study and they found for every 10 grams of increase in fiber, it decreased your chances of cardiovascular mortality by 17%. I mean, that's, that's dramatic. It is. And the only place to get fiber are plant food. You know, a lot of these you're probably familiar with some of these carnivore diets. You know, I listened to a podcast that Joe Rogan did with a a doctor named Paul Saladino, and he wrote the carnivore carnivore code. And he was bragging that his LDL bad cholesterol was 535. I heard that episode. 
I mean, normals, you know, you should be below 80. You know, you know when you're eating a carnivore diet, you're getting zero fiber. And so that has a very negative effect on your microbiome. In fact, there was a really good study that your listeners might be interested in. It was a 2014 study in Nature. And this was prospective. So they took half the group they put on a carnivore diet and the other group they put on a whole food plant-based diet. And they analyzed their, you know, their microbiome before mm -hmm. the study started. In five days, their microbiomes completely changed. The people that were eating the plant-based diet had a much higher incidence of the good Prevotella bacteria and the individuals that were eating the carnivore diet had a very low incidence of the good Prevotella and a very high incidence of the Bacteroidetes, which are the two main subclasses of the, right. good micro, of the good bacteria and the bad bacteria. But even in five days, you can dramatically change your microbiome just by increasing your plant content. And this whole, the new carnivore thing, and I'm not, I'm not saying like, don't eat red meat or like, I'm not, I'm not putting anything out there. We're just like discussing the facts and the studies here. Right. But we don't have a whole lot of data on this whole like carnivore diet thing. That's been yeah, yeah. You know, pretty really popular. We exactly. don't really know yet. No, no, it's all cherry picking. You really uh -huh. have to look at the preponderance of the evidence over a long period of time. Yep. I mean, we know there have been many epidemiological studies that show when you eat more plant foods. In fact, you want the longest epidemiologic study? Look at the blue zones. Right. You know, these are the five areas of the world where people live the longest and their diets are about 90 to 95% plant-based. So they, mm -hmm. you know, they, most of them eat meat. It's usually once a week. It's about the size of a deck of cards. And I don't have any problem with people eating meat. I just don't think it should be, you know, the primary part the, yeah. of the diet. Yeah. You know, I, I think in America, it's 60% ultra processed foods and meat and dairy. And I read one study, it was a CDC study that the average American only eats 1.8 servings of fruits and vegetables per day. It's true. And that's with French fries and ketchup yes. being counted as a vegetable. I mean, it was yes. like when I read that, and then there was another one that I read, and this was another CDC study. It was on fiber intake. And this was about 10 years ago. Maybe it might be a little different now, but oh, it's probably worse. But individuals between 30 to 50, men, 0% hit 30 grams of fiber. And with women, it was about 3%. And when they got over 50, women, it got around like 50 to 70, it was about 17%. And men, it was like maybe about 8%. I mean, men are the worst mm -hmm. as far as diet. In fact, there was one study I read, it was about uh, men with prostate cancer. And they asked them, would you rather die or change your diet? And 25% said they'd rather die than change their diet. You know, yeah. it's just, you know, men for some reason, I don't know what it is, but they're, you know, they think like eating a burger or whatever is, you know, manly. manly. Yeah. Manly. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And they, so. they will suffer too. They will have, you know, they'll get diabetes and like, I know a couple of people that are like coming to my head right now and I know their wives and they're like, he don't care. He's not going to change. He's not going to give up his beer and he's not going to give up the steak. And I'm like, but he's miserable. And now his skin is changing and he has this unexplained rosacea and psoriasis is awful. And I'm like, yeah, look at him doing the diet. And they're like, he, you can't. And I'm yeah, like, it oh is, my God. It's frustrating. It's like when you go into a restaurant, it's common to see a woman eating a salad. Yes. But it's uncommon to see a man eating a salad, you know, yep. at a restaurant. So it's just. I know. It's and maybe that's one of the reasons men have a lower life expectancy. I don't know, but that might be one of the. We're smarter too, you know. Women are just. Smarter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but one thing about the blue zones too is that you know there's other things that they do. I mean, they're moving all the time. You know, mm -hmm. they're going up hilly terrain. You know, they're eating a lot of, like I said, plant foods. They have less stress. These people typically don't wake up to an alarm clock. They don't have morning rush. Yeah. Whenever the sun wakes up, that's when they wake up. Yep. And they have good social ties. So I think all the, I think we can learn a lot from them. And remember, a lot of these people don't even have a TV or a cell phone. So they don't know the latest craze. So they don't know about the carnivore diet, the keto diet. You know, they don't know any of this stuff. Nope. You know, they're, they're just living their life in a way that's very helpful. And I think we need to look at them and kind of say, okay, what are they doing that can help us right. in our lifestyle? Yeah. What can we take from that? Right. Are there exactly. any vegetables that you don't recommend or you're like, yeah, avoid that. Because I've read like Dr. Gundry's books. I've listened to him. <laughs> I think Dr. Gundry's out in left field. In fact, you you know, sure he's in the, he shakes he, his head immediately. He's into like lectin, don't eat. You know, one of the, one of the highest lectin foods are beans. And I will tell you, you go through the, the scientific literature, cultures that live the longest 
are bean eaters. That's the prime. In fact, if you look at the blue zones, most of them, that's their primary protein source. It's easy to grow. Are beans. People that eat, in fact, Dr. Greger in his book, Eat Not to Die, he has an app called The Daily Dozen. He recommends three servings of beans per day. Now, I can't do that. I do at least one a day. Like I tried three, but it's hard to stuff three bean servings, you know, in your body every day, but you should try to get a bean serving every day. But Dr. Gun, I, in fact, Dr. Uh, Gregor did a video on Dr. Gundry's hypothesis about lectins and it's totally, it's totally bogus. I mean, when you really look at the, at the science, you know, high lectin foods, for instance, like beans, I mean, they, that's the longevity food. I always tell uh -huh. people you're going to eat one food. In fact, that's where you can get most of your fiber. I mean, most of your fiber should come from whole grains and beans, nuts, and seed. Because uh, fruits and vegetables have fiber. But remember what I said before, 90 to 95% is water. So when you're eating you know, nuts and seeds, whole grains and beans, there's very little water in there. So you're getting a lot more fiber per weight when you're eating those three food groups. I used to eat so much different squash and green beans. And then I started reading his books and he was saying like, you know, they're just stop and they're not good. And I'm like, wait, I need to dive into this more because I was like, I loved all those types of vegetables. And then I started uh, yeah, cutting yeah, back yeah. and I'm yeah. like, Oh no, you know, you, you want to no eat fun. as many different foods as you can. In fact, my wife and I, we try to get 30 different foods every week into our diet like on a typically week, oh, wow. plant foods. And actually when you count uh, herbs and spices, we, we get it around 40. And, you know, our, I've never totally calculated, but I probably eat at least 60 grams of fiber per day. And I personally, I think that's what people should shoot for. You know, I know there are, I've listened to some of your podcasts. I, I know you said you're uh, gluten sensitive and, you know, that can affect, you know, sometimes the amount of, uh, you know, fiber that you eat. But one thing I do want to mention about gluten sensitivity. Yes. Really only 1% of the population really has like a true gluten sensitivity. It's called celiac disease. Mm -hmm. What a lot of people have is actually a fructan sensitivity. And a lot of fruits and vegetables have these oligosaccharides. They're called fructans. And you can do what's called a fructan elimination diet. Like if you go on the internet, type in foods with fructans. And what you can do is you can start eliminating like if you notice, hey, I eat a lot of this food, maybe eliminate that food. And that might be what's causing what you think is gluten insensitivity. Because I really do think this gluten-free craze is going to cause a lot of health problems because a lot of these gluten-free foods you see on the, in the supermarket, they're basically, you know, processed Awful. foods, a lot of them. You know, they just put gluten-free on it and people think it's healthy. So a lot of people are missing out on, you know, a lot of the fiber. Mm -hmm. Now there are whole grains, you probably are well aware that are gluten-free, like quinoa, you know, rice yep. is gluten-free, you know, teff, buckwheat, you know. So if you go on the internet and you just type in grains that are gluten-free, I mean, you can still get a lot of those whole grains, which I do think are important without the gluten. But right. once again, I do think a lot of times it's actually a fructan sensitivity rather than an actual gluten sensitivity. Just something to think about. I agree. I completely agree. I just know that like my skin, the bags, circles under my eyes, the pain across my gut, completely gone once I stopped eating just like bread and pasta. Right, like, right. Yeah. Like everybody's different. Everybody's genes are different. Like some, right. you know, everybody shouldn't eat exactly the same diet. But it worked out great because I replaced all that with vegetables. That's way better. <laughs> Every side, like my spaghetti is a huge plate full of broccoli with the meat and everything on top. You know, I'll do like the marinara with some ground turkey or something. But right, like right, right. the base of my meal is my broccoli now, not pasta. Right, right, right. <laughs> so right. it worked out good for me because now I'm filling up on beautiful whole salads instead of, you know, the side of garlic bread that we right, would have served, right, you know, right, so right. exactly it worked out. Now I know we're running out of time and you, we had talked about, or before we were talking, I was laughing at the verbiage um, on my sheet here. Cause you have five recommendations for anti-cancerizing yeah. yourself, right, anti-cancerizing. Right. Like I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to anti-cancerize myself. Hey, everybody needs to. Yeah. And one of them we were saying was sleep, right? right. right. What are the other four? The best okay, things that we can do. It's a plant strong diet. You know, I eat a whole food plant-based diet. I think if somebody has cancer, they should eat a whole food plant-based. But I think for, you know, someone like you, like a plant strong, I like that word predominant Ooh, plant strong. I mean, like, like you can do a predominant keto, you can do a plant predominant paleo. I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can, you know, kind of tweak it. 
The second thing are targeted supplements. I, I do over 30 targeted supplements. When I do cancer coaching, when I write a letter, I put three asterisks next to the ones I think are the most important, two asterisks to the ones that are less important and one asterisk to the least important. So I let them kind of you know, pick and choose what they can afford and so forth. Then the third is sleep. The fourth is stress reduction. And the final one is exercise. And we, you know, we talked a lot about that. That's really important. And then really in the exercise chapter, I do talk about intermittent fasting and they have shown, there was a good study I have in my book. They took breast cancer patients and they put them into two groups. Those that fasted more than 13 hours every day. And those that fasted less than 13. The ones that fasted more than 13 had a 36% reduction in relapse rate. So intermittent fasting definitely has a positive effect on cancer development. Wow. So they're the, that's how you enter, anti-cancerize yourself. Anti-cancerize. We yep. should make t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It's, <laughs> anti, it is a good word. It is. It's anti, <laughs> is it yeah. even a real word? Is cancerizing a word? I don't even think it is. Honestly. I don't think it's a real word. <laughs> hey, That's maybe why... it can be, maybe it can be trademarked. You never I, know. You, you, you know. should, you should, yeah, you definitely yeah, yeah. should. Because <laughs> everybody should be anti-cancerizing. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but no, I think that's important too, that you said that if you do have cancer, that you should be on like a whole strong plant-based diet, right? Yeah, I, I really do. Because the other thing in, I don't want to take up a lot of your time, but animal protein definitely causes your liver to secrete IGF-1 growth hormone. Once again, you want to lower that. They've found that yeah. if you go on a plant-based diet in 11 days, you actually lower your IGF-1 by, by 20%. I mean, it's like you can lower the IGF-1 very significantly. In fact, one thing is really interesting. There's, a, there's these dwarfs uh, in South America. They're called Laurent dwarfs. They have a mutation. They secrete zero IGF-1. And there's never been a reported case of cancer in a Ron dwarf. So that's kind of like a Mendelian randomization study right there. I mean, it just shows that IGF-1 definitely is a you know cancer growth promoter. That's interesting. Yeah, it really is. It's fascinating you stuff. You are so fascinating to me and all of the studies that you know and that you can quote. Like, I am so impressed. <laughs> well, that's my job. Every morning when I wake up, I jump into PubMed and I read studies. I mean, that's you're what I like do. A, first you're thing a sponge in the for it. You just yeah, take well, it all that's, in and you're a sponge. Well, well, the thing is when you talk to patients, you have to give them yeah. credible evidence. You just can't be you know, giving anecdotal stories. And that's one thing I like about Dr. Greger's book. There were no anecdotal stories. It wasn't like I ate kale, my cancer went away. You know, it was like, right. okay, study after study after study showed that people that in groups that ate more plant-based had lower you know, incidence of cancer. So that's my job is to really yeah. convey the information so that my patients believe what I'm saying. So they move ahead and take the right steps. Right. Right. Well, you're very good at your job. I think your book is absolutely amazing. It has opened my eyes to so many things and you guys, you have to get it. Check it out. It's called beat back cancer naturally five scientifically proven natural and plant-based ways to prevent survive and thrive with cancer and you can get it on amazon yeah and they can also if they want a signed copy they can go on my website natural insights into cancer.com uh, you know when they order it there i give them a signed copy oh cool on there so but they can go on amazon it's in audio and it's also in kindle so if they like to do it that way they can order it that way so I didn't know that. I missed the audio, but I like having her copy books too, but it would have been nice to have a nice autograph copy. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm going to send you one. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay. There we go. And you guys make sure you follow him on cancer veggie doc. If you're on IG, I'm going to find that coffee post and I'll, I'll repost it on my story here too. Yeah, Cause yeah, I, I it, think that's really cool. It has all everything that I put in my coffee. So. <laughs> Perfect. I don't even know how I jammed it into one photo to be honest with you. But <laughs> Perfect. We will all check it out. Well, thank you so much for coming on Dr. Brandy. Like this hey, it was a pleasure. It's a lot this of fun. This has been amazing and so educational and you just never know like who's listening and whose life you just changed like we just changed the whole path of their that absolutely they were going on. okay yeah one other thing uh your you know audience needs to know i do a uh, very extensive lab testing you know i check all oh. the vitamins minerals uh, amino acids omega-6 to omega-3 ratio c-reactive protein hemoglobin a1c IGF-1, I check your IGF-1 levels, but I, I do it through Quest. So it's covered with insurance. I charge, oh, yeah, I charge $150 just to analyze it. I send you a letter, then I chat with you, 
you know, make sure that, you know, you're making the, the appropriate changes. But I will tell you, it's amazing how many people have severe mineral deficiencies. I mean, I've never had anybody with a normal molybdenum level. Wow. Cobalt is usually really low or non-existent. Chromium, I mean, it, it sometimes I'm blown away when I look at the, some of these results. So I, I basically look at them and then I make recommendations okay. on way that they can adjust some of these, you know, primarily mineral levels, you know, iodine levels are low a lot, vitamin D levels are low. You probably get people and you're like, how are you even alive? Yeah. I mean, it's, I think a lot of it is really the way we farm. I think a lot yeah. of the soil, we're not rotating the crops. So like cobalt is low in a lot of the patients. And, you know, one of the ways to get cobalt, eat beans every day, you'll get tons of cobalt, right. but, but a lot of the soil is actually cobalt deficient because of the way that we do our farming nowadays. So, oh my gosh. So, you know, so that lab testing, it's very inexpensive. I put a diagnosis code on it. You go to a local Quest lab. I basically send you the sheet. You hand the sheet to the Quest people. They draw your blood. They fax me the results in about two weeks. And then I send you a letter and then we chat for about 15 minutes, just kind of go over a, oh, cool. you know, a game plan. So, okay. Yeah, so we uh, can sign up for that, like on your website, natural insight. Yeah. All that's on the website, okay. the coaching. I have 24 seven access to me through texting and email. I have a, like a thing for that too. Uh, if somebody wants uh, a lot of the cancer patients, they'll get lab tests and they get freaked out. So, you know, they'll send me their lab work sure. and I'll look at it. Hey, everything's fine. You're good. You're not going to die tomorrow. Yeah. You know, things are Things are doing good. So, oh, cool. Maybe yeah. I'll send you it's, some of my blood. <laughs> hey, if you want to do it, I won't even charge you for it. If you want oh, no, you can charge me, but yeah, you no, can take no, a I'll... look at Melissa's blood and see what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm probably hey, due for it anyway. Uh, you're probably doing great. I'm, I'm sure of it. <laughs> the energy you have. I'm sure you're in great shape. So. Oh, well, thank you. And thank you again for coming on. Everyone, make sure you check out his book. Go to the website, naturalinsightsintocancer.com. Check him out on Instagram, cancer veggie doc. And we're going to put everything in the show notes. So everything will be there if you guys are listening and driving or running around with kids or whatever. But thank you again for coming on. I, you, Hey, Melissa was great. I, like I said, I enjoy your podcast, a lot of energy, a lot of good information. Love well, it. I appreciate it. Everyone stay safe, stay healthy until next time. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. This is given with the understanding that neither the host practice of the practice or the guest are providing legal, mental health, nutritional, or other professional information. If you need a professional, you should find one.